Okay, camera's over here. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> no, me. You look at it all the time. I keep forgetting that it's over here. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think we said we were going to try and switch it, but. I don't know. Let's see how that works. Now watch, you'll be looking at the wrong space. Nope. <laughs> so that didn't work. Okay. Even though it's not locked, but okay. So hi. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> so, um, per the title, beginnings and uh, writing, I have two books that are writing related, and you have some gaming books. Cool. The beginning of which, <laughs> oddly enough. Yeah. Actually, and, the uh, first edition of that was the beginning of that, but anyway. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Um, format might change for next week a little bit, and um, this mm -hmm. week we're kind of like, he's on it, I'm kind of like vertical. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, it's it's been a, a good past week. And it's been super busy. Um, we've had a lot going on. I've had a lot going on. Uh, I am the new chair, uh, festival chair for Berea Pride. So we're going to be working on their Pride Festival that is actually in October. It's September 30th through October 2nd. And uh, so I'm going to my first meeting tonight and learning more about that. So it should be interesting. Um, I'm excited. I haven't done a, a Pride Festival in a, a very long time. I used to set up at Gainesville Pride in Florida. Um, so I am working on Pride designs. I'm working on uh, some other stuff as well as a Zine Fest exposition. Uh, I will link to that mm. down in the comments after um in the doobly-doo in the doobly-doo after <laughs> okay i'm using that that's my word for today is doobly-doo um <laughs> so i'll be linking to that below um i am going to be rounding up all the zine makers that i know uh from kentucky fried zine fest which sadly will not be returning as far as i know um I've talked to Michelle and she kind of gave her blessing on me starting one. So lots of potential with that. Um, I'm excited to be teaching zines again and online and off and hope to not only grow the community, but reconnect with a lot of people that we knew from past scene fest. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, we have, Writing books today, two of my favorite. Uh, this one, I actually bought a copy, and then when I was writing, um, writing the writer's group in Florida, found like 10 copies. This one's dog-eared and loved. Um, at the dollar store, oh, and cute. bought a ton of them for like Val and other people in the group. So uh, this book has been really good anytime I've lacked inspiration or um, just wanted to kind of have background noise, structure. reinforcement, and just, you know, there's some sections in here I've reread and read and reread <laughs> more than no, others. I've, I've used it for structure and inspiration, mm -hmm. especially. You know, because there's sections in there that talk about, hey, you should do this if you're having trouble thinking of things. Yeah. You know, or there's sections in there for, you know, this is good for format or this, is, yeah. There's like plot layout in there. There's all kinds of great stuff in that one. Tense and tension. Um, mm -hmm. Loving the language. Acceptable ways to use your thesaurus. Um <laughs> know how to use the different tenses was a big one uh, for me and I'm trying to find 
find the one chapter that's I have lost my bookmark in here. No. Um, it goes into a lot of things like linguistic triggers, scenes and narrative, um, time, revisions. I mean, just a lot of a lot of things. So this is highly highly recommended. Um, this one came out in, I got it in 2011, 2008, so it's been around for a while. Um, completely timeless and valid and love this one. So I will link to that down below. The other one is more of a functional one for me because I'm working on children's books a lot of the time. And this one's been instrumental for a lot of things. Not only does it have different ways to use the words with the thesaurus in here, which is the majority of the book, or actually the last half of the book. And then this goes into words for specific grades. So fifth grade word list. goes all the way through mm -hmm. kindergarten, I think, through sixth grade and middle school. Yeah, sixth grade and middle school. So if you're writing for a specific age group, this one has been fabulous for me. I also have a couple of older books that are wordless. Um, that I don't think I have over here, but um, being able to check your manuscript is something that you can do online too, and I'll link to that. So you can post your manuscript and you can figure out which words might be knocking it a group higher than you want or a group lower. Um, but it'll give you, I think there's like five or six different tests and it'll give you what the grade level is for your manuscript. So that's that's handy. But being able to use this and even use it as an inspiration thing. Because I'll look at words and I'll come up with random sentences. And then, oh, okay, this, this connects here. Or this, this might be something I can use to create a story. Or, you know, so it's it's been good for inspiration too. But good tool to have um, in any writer's life, children's book writing or not. So, your turn. Hmm. Your books. Yes. I'm going to enjoy my coffee. We got Post Alley. <laughs> oh, everybody that I know, whether you they've know. played this game <laughs> or not, knows what this is. I'd never... I never even played D and D yet, and I knew what Rifts was. Yes. No. That's what I'm saying. No. This is from a company called Palladium. It's one of my favorite companies uh, of all time. I have stacks of these books, um, <laughs> but I'm actually not reviewing this book. I'm holding it up as reference because most people will not know what this book is. <laughs> this is one of my favorite world book settings for Rifts. This is Mad Haven. This is post-apocalyptic Manhattan and Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. Yes. <laughs> we have friends from Long Island, so. So, as I as I mentioned, this is this is a you know after the bomb kind of uh, uh, Manhattan setting and surrounding region. Um, these books are awesome because they give you uh, just world building fodder galore for any whatever you're looking for. There's uh, different occupations or different um, classes of character uh, of various sorts, and almost every one of these books has a, a, a varying number of those occupations. Things like a spy or things like you know whatever. Um, 
something that you would find in those areas. The world building for these is fantastic. You'll find uh, organizations that exist within those parts of the world, things like that. You can play the entire game out of these books with the, the main Rifts book. You create your character out of the Rifts book or with one of the occupations in these books in particular, and then you play in whatever that book is for setting. Uh, there are all kinds. Um, Rifts is the kitchen sink game, as I like to refer to it, um, even more so than Shadowrun. Um, I love Shadowrun. There's, you know, there's magic, there's cybernetics, there's androids, there's you know, partial robots, there's you know, Robotech-style mechs walking around. Uh, there are uh, guys, that, guys that have you know, all kinds of heavy weaponry attached to them. Uh, crazy stuff. In fact, Crazies is one of the occupation names, actually, in Rifts, <laughs> oddly enough. Uh, Juicer, Crazy, uh, you know, there's all kinds of strange occupations in Rifts. Um, and they're all futuristic, but any of these characters or any of the fantasy game characters could fall through a Rift and end up in one of these worlds <coughs> that is not very fantasy and not very friendly. So... But that is one of my favorites. I thought grungy, I would pull grungy, it off. Grungy, edgy, apocalyptic. And it, and it is crunchy. Um, <laughs> on the level of, like, third edition D&D, &D, where you had, like, the first D&D &D version that had skills, which was between second and third edition, and then third and third 3.5 incorporated them uh, as a main feature. Um, but they're all rolled on percentile dice rather than using a d20. Um, your attack rolls and things like that are all done on d20. So the system's just using different dice. It isn't necessarily more crunchy. Um, but there are a lot of rules. There's a lot of places to find the rules. The one thing I dislike about these books that is my only gripe is it's difficult to find everything you're looking for when you're creating a character. Mm. The format of this book would shine if it was laid out better uh, now that for 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 chron uh, for for the order that you create your character for now is that for the for riffs or for the fantasy role all playing? of it just this okay. just system in general i have i've found very few of these books that have a really good format for setting up a character the second book i have today which the second book is the fantasy version of the palladium game system it was uh, it, it went through a first edition. This is the second edition book uh, that was released and revised afterwards. And this is self-contained in one book, pretty much. You can play a rough... I opened up to my favorite page. A, a rough facsimile. Uh, Summoning control canines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, can, you can play a fantasy style of game, something similar to what people play as D&D &D or, or Pathfinder, out of this book alone. And Thank you. Alphabetical list of spells. I know, like, right? Hello. Right? I'm, I'm telling you. I love that system, and there's some really cool occupations in there. There's uh, a separated knight and paladin in there. There's uh, a priest of light and a priest of darkness. The magic classes in this game That's are very neat. cool. There's uh, witches, warlocks, summoners, uh, diabolists, um, regular wizards. Warlocks are actually your elemental casters in this game. A little bit different. That was a hat. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like Ming the Merciless with like it is. the wizard hat. It, it's very much so. <laughs> a lot of their artwork looks like combinations of things. Yeah, because this is definitely Maleficent. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a Maleficent vibe going on yeah. there. Yeah, so, yeah, there's some fun stuff in there, and I I love diving into those books when I'm tired of looking at, like, 5th edition D&D &D and some of the cookie-cutterness that you get from that. The skill sets that you can choose in this game uh, for uh, your characters, um, you know, just, what? I'm cracking up at the... The female paladin with the crop top. The 80s, yes. That's when they printed this book. I was going to say, 
I was going to say you can tell. Not the to guy mention the hair. Those. Not to mention the hair. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's probably mostly guys. But anyway, <laughs> you're talking about 1980. Oh, I know. I know comics and everything else. Con yeah. Comics. But I'm just coming from somebody who fought heavy weapons. Mm-hmm. You're going to last about two seconds. Yeah, just cut me in half, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With no exactly. armor on your midriff. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, SCA brain kicking in here. Uh-huh. So, definitely kitchen sink. Very cool. Yeah. What's interesting, though, and I had this brought up to my attention like two days ago, is this artwork looks very similar to something that they used in Dragonlance for Dungeons and Dragons years ago. There was an artist who drew a very similar photo to this of a dragon kind of over the back of like a wizard mm. kind of gazing into a crystal ball like kind of like that with a big crown on his head and who stole the artwork from who? Yeah. Palladium and this image was used for this book before it was used for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Just an interesting trivia tidbit there. Uh, this book, because this book was... Uh, I also yeah. see a lot of repeat images, like that image appears again in here. In that section. What? They just cropped it a little bit. Yeah. It was up here. Yeah, it's in the wizard section. Yeah. In the, under the occupation, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same exact image because uh, right, right here. there. Oh yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah. So it's also in the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So repurposing the images and stuff. Yeah. But like the equipment and the types of body armor that they have, <laughs> that listing in there. Yeah, but like I said, you can play Palladium Fantasy out of just that book because there's an entire map section back here mm -hmm. with a description for all of the areas in the world oh, you find them and the kind of the kind of groups you will find in them that you can yes. interact with and they're all broken up individually marked in black you had me at maps yeah, yeah. So, cool. so every one of those areas marked in black is a different area that you can play in. It's basically a super continent. That's cool. So, yeah. I like that they had it laid out like that. Uh -huh. And then they give you a nice little description, find somewhere in that area to start, you know, and place the characters as the game master, you know, and, and then you go from there, you know. Maybe create some structures and some organizations that are in those areas and then cool. you know, use those as contacts. Really cool. Mm -hmm. We're in desperate need of getting back into a D&D &D game. <laughs> so here's the question, though. It's like, who's running the next one? Because Issa ran our last two. I don't know. I don't know. Logan was saying he wanted to start playing yeah. again and doing things. Yeah, and, so but I think he was wanting to Game Master again, so yeah. I, I don't know. We can oh, do I'm, that. Totally, I'm totally cool with that. Yeah, we can do that on Zoom or at, at his place if it's just a few of us. But, yeah. you know. So there's something about... Like, we've played our last two com campaigns. We played via Zoom, and I'm grateful that we can still have that mm -hmm. connection. And I love the aspect of being able to play with people that don't live near us. Like, we have a, a friend, a dear friend, who is like family to us and mm -hmm. unfortunately has had three bouts of COVID and is, uh, is getting over pneumonia now. Um, cannot catch a break. <laughs> Um, but we were able to play with him, um, in Connecticut while we're all here in Kentucky. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love that aspect of it, but there's nothing like sitting around a table or sitting in somebody's living room and being there in person and being completely goofy. And, you know, it's just, it's a... It's a different vibe. It's a lot, a lot more fun, I think, mm -hmm. because you can see things real time transpire. Um, we do have board game night with the Kentucky Browncoats next 
Thursday night, our second Thursday of the month is always at Bad Wolf Games in Berea now, and we're doing um, board game night there from 7 to 10, 7 to 10. I had to think because I have illustration club tonight that is eight from ten to eight to ten, so, um, but uh, seven to ten is our normal um, board game night, and being able to be there in person is a lot of fun. My <laughs> as my <laughs> sleepy daughter comes through. <laughs> no, you missed him. You no, I saw that. him. He's on live. <laughs> I can yeah, no, see I him just, in the camera. Well, that's why I kind of look. Because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so good morning. But um, but yeah, we we were just talking about the need for a D and D game. You're gonna get, probably get your dad to to run one. I don't know. I don't. That's not gonna take over our board game night. But definitely would like to have something in place. Um. I know I've been too busy, you've been too busy, mm -hmm. so it's not going to happen for a little bit, but... Mm -hmm. Like that, so. that'd be one of the start at the beginning of the year. And yeah. Get everybody, everybody has been really busy, not to mention the fact that we had COVID in January, so <laughs> I kind of put a wrench in everything. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, lots of, lots of good things coming, uh, lots of events and... Uh, I know I'm going to be doing a young author's uh, evening at a high school in Shelbyville on April 19th, um, that, that's and then weird. it's a Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Yeah, so I will not be that's live a weird streaming. Night to do something. Like that. <laughs> I will not be live streaming uh, that mm. Tuesday night, and then uh, the Imaginarium in July. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to I knew about that one. reconnecting yeah. with people. And I have to order books between now and then so I can have books at my table. Um, so looking forward to, to slowly emerging out into the world, but at the same time masking up and carrying enough sanitizer to drown a horse. <laughs> um, you know, just shy of, of doing the hazmat suit. Um, not ready for stuff like Lexcon. Uh, we didn't go this year, and I missed it, and was having withdrawals when I was seeing everybody post. Um, so hopefully, maybe next year. Lexcon's getting big, but Gen it's so Con, huge. Yeah. The year right before COVID hit, they were getting sixty thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> nope. At Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A whole lot of nope. Room full of room full of nightmares. <laughs> Um, but next, uh, next, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, next year, Lexicon, maybe we'll see because the brown coats need to get back out into the world, too. Um, speaking of which, we have our first bowling brown coat bowling back after three years this Sunday. <laughs> from 1 to 3 at Galaxy Lanes in Richmond, and I'm excited. Um, I know everybody else is excited, too, and I'm really hoping for a good turnout. We've got uh, Buffer Lane. Galaxy was nice enough to honor our original deal, so we'll have pizza, and it's 10 bucks for uh, pizza, bowling, shoes, and you get to hang out with the brown coats. So, and, and all the nerdy stuff. So we have, you know, people there from 501st. We have people uh, from the Brown Coats group. We have people that don't do cosplay or anything like that. Um, I can't bowl physically because of the lymphedema. So anybody that doesn't bowl, that just wants to come out and hang out and have some pizza, um, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, again, it's $10 per person. You pay me, and then I pay the counter. So um, we just go up and tell me with the Kentucky Brown Coats. So. But lots of good stuff coming. Um, trying to think what else is going on. Got bowling. Got board game night. Mm -hmm. Got illustration club. Mm -hmm. The next one is tonight. 
So Illustration Club tonight is from 8 to 10. It's on Zoom. So it's a private room that I set up. So if you want in, message me on Facebook or Discord or anywhere on social media and I can get you in on that. We are going to be doing book binding tonight. So we're doing kettle stitch um, and just using what you have, just recycled food boxes, um, typing paper, you know, if you have just a bunch of junk papers laying around or, you know, business envelopes that have like decorative patterns on them, um, pretty much anything can go into a junk journal. So we're doing the quarter size. So this is a quarter sheet size. It's like four and a quarter by five and a half, maybe Some, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, almost so, six. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, this one in particular has like tea stained coffee stained pages, um, but we're going to be making these. Mm -hmm. No special equipment required. Um, if you've got a needle, thread, if you've got DMC floss or like, you know, embroidery floss, that works. Um, if you do have wax cord, wax cord is preferred. Um, yeah. But really, it's, you know, finding what you've got around the house and making, making a book. <laughs> and I'm teaching uh, kettle stitch, so. Um, but... Uh, we're gonna wrap it up. I've gotta take my daughter to work here shortly, so. Um, <laughs> hence the noise, she's prepping for her day. Um, but uh, lots of, lots of good things coming. Like I said, check my website for Doves for Ukraine updates. We are still doing that and donating mm -hmm. to the Returning Peace Corps Volunteers Alliance for Ukraine and World Central Kitchens, World Central Kitchen, excuse me, uh, who has fed three over three million meals now um, on the borders of the Ukraine and nearby um, for refugees. We're very grateful for their involvement over there, and uh, we've been watching updates from friends that have family there um it's been good to have some kind of positive action and we're hoping when we hit 1000 doves that we can start sending them over um through hopefully world central kitchens kitchen or um one of the other charities to get them to the refugees so i am connecting constantly with different groups um if you know of a group uh, that's verified, feel free to comment down below and let me know. Um, and I think that's about it for today. Sorry, I'm a rambly hot mess today. <laughs> but that's why I'm kind of like, okay, go ahead and talk while my brain adjusts to language today, <laughs> to the English language today. But, um... Thank you so much for being here, for watching, for hanging out, for uh, supporting the channel. And like I said, I'm going to try and clean up my act for next week and be a little more organized. Uh, but we're here, we're showing up, keeping it real. <laughs> and take care, stay well, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, and be kind to each other. Take care.